Welcome to the chapter of sets and in this first video we're going to talk about what are sets. Well simply put set is a collection of objects. Let's look at a few examples. Let's look at even natural numbers less than 10. Well if they're even they have to be 2, 4, 6, 8 and they can't be more than 8 because we're looking at numbers which are less than 10. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. It's a good collection of objects. Another one. Vowels in the English alphabet. Well, there are five vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Let's look at another one. Factors of 100. Well, they are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50 and 100 itself. These are all the factors of 100 and it's a good collection of objects. So all of these are sets. Let's continue. Solutions of the equation x square equals to 1. So now we have to solve this equation. Well, it's a pretty common one. So x square equal to 1 has two solutions, 1 and minus 1. And again, this is also a set. Collection of all even integers. Hmm. Think about it. How many even integers do we have? Well, I think we can't count the number of even integers that we have. We can start, we can have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. And in fact, it says integers, so we can go in the other direction. We can have 0, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 and so on. So there are infinite number of even integers. Can we call this a collection of objects? We can call this a collection of objects. Just that in this case we have infinite objects in this set. Let's look at another one. Most influential artists. Well this one's tricky. Would you call Lata Mangeshkar most influential or Arijit Singh or both of them or none of them? Do you have your own favorites? Do you have your own list of artists that have influenced you? What about this one? Most dangerous animals in the world. Do you think snakes are dangerous or spiders or dogs or wolves or lion or cheetah? Which animals do you think are most dangerous? The first one, even natural numbers less than 10, that's a set. The next one is a set. Factors of 100, set. Solutions of the equation, set. Collection of all even integers, that too is a set, but the next two are not sets. And I haven't been completely honest with you. I only gave you a partial definition of what a set is. Let me go back and give you the complete definition of what a set is. A set is not just any collection of objects. A set is a well-defined collection of objects. You should be able to clearly tell whether something is part of the set or not. For the collection of even integers, you can say that minus 5 is not part of it, but minus 6 is. Here the collection is well defined. For the next two, the collection is not well defined. It is loosely defined. So these two are not sets. So what's a set? A set is a well defined collection of objects, which means we can definitely decide whether something belongs to the collection or not. Whenever we can do this, we can say that it's a set. Whenever we can't, we can say that it's no longer a set. It's not a set. Sure, it's a collection, but it's not a well-defined collection. All right, now let's look at some common sets from the math world. The first one is one, two, three, four, and so on. It is a set which has infinite objects. We call this the set of all natural numbers and it is denoted by the capital letter N. And if we add the negative numbers in zero to the list, what we get is a new collection, a new set, and that's called the set of all integers and it's denoted by the capital letter Z. Then we have this set where we also add fractions. This set is called the set of all rational numbers and it is denoted by Q. And then we have the set of all real numbers where we have added square root of 2, pi, e, etc. These are all irrational numbers. So when we add rational numbers and irrational numbers together we get the set of all real numbers and that's denoted by the capital letter R. And we can even slice them up. Let's say we only look at the positive numbers. Let's say we only look at the positive rational numbers. This set is called R plus. This is the set of all positive real numbers. There are cases where we only need the positive results. And for those cases, we use these sets. Another example is when we only take the positive integers. That's called the set of all positive integers and it's denoted by Z plus. All right, so these are some common sets from the math world. Let's finally look at some common norms and notations before we move on to the rest of the chapter. One, two, three, four, well, they're part of the natural number set. 
But what are they called? Well, they have many names. We call them objects, elements or members of the set n. All three of them mean the same thing. Also, sets are usually denoted by capital letters. This for example is a set of natural numbers and we denote it with the capital letter n, not the small letter n. We reserve the small letters for their elements. And now let me introduce you to two symbols. This one, it's called epsilon. This one means belongs to. So when something belongs to a set, we use this symbol. And when something does not belong to a set, we use this symbol. It's also epsilon, but it has a cross over it. If small a is an element of capital A, we say that small a belongs to capital A. And when small a is not an element, we say that it does not belong to capital A. Examples, 5 belongs to the set of integers, whereas 5.5 does not. A belongs to the set of vowels, whereas B does not. Alright, there's so much more to learn about the fascinating world of sets. What we have covered in this video should get you started.